Hello, it's Crypto CJ. Welcome to today's trade of the day. It's a Friday afternoon Zoom edition. And uh, big news, Bitcoin has punched through 40,000 and has stayed there all day. Let's check it out. Share my screen. We'll go to the Bitcoin chart. And you guys should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart. Um, if you're not, let me know. Okay, so we it seems to be, it did dip below my trend line from Monday and then shot way up beyond it. We're at 40,800 now, or 600 now. I've got the news items up here. You can click it on trading view on this uh, third uh, icon here and get the news. There's nothing really earth shaking other than um, I clicked on this Bitcoin reclaims 40,000 article. And it says the layer ones like Ethereum and Solana are also up today. So that's good news. Um, you know, the stock market's up a little bit. NASDAQ's up a little bit. Uh, there was some good good news regarding the jobs uh, report. So some of the basic kind of things that help the stock market go up uh, also help Bitcoin and crypto as well. So, you know, that's my uh, my theory, for lack of a better word. Anybody have any other information they want to share uh, that they think propelled today's up uptick? I mean, we're up. Bitcoin's up like 8 or 9%. Yeah, right at 9%. Up over Do you see the number of shorts that got squeezed? Because it sounded like when I listened to Rand, it was the short squeeze was just only thing, you know, the, those who were in the short positions. Yeah, so uh, Connie's talking about people who are doing leverage purchases and and maybe had um, stop losses around 39.5, you know, 39.8, 40, you know, that kind of thing. And when Bitcoin moved up, they had to sell or they had to buy to cover those positions and that caused uh, the price to go up even more. So that makes sense to me. All right. And Ethereum went up even more. Uh, yeah, it's up 9.7% uh, in riding my trend line nicely. And uh, like to see this punch through 3000 so like to see bitcoin stay above 40k and close above 40k i think that would be a psychological hurdle uh, to help push it up to 50 and then um with uh, ethereum if we can hit 3000 and stay uh, stay at or above that i think that would be a psychological hurdle as well it's right here in the sweet spot of my um, fibonacci retracements so this would be a good a good buying opportunity, I think, if uh, if it can show some staying power. Not financial advice, but we've uh, we've pushed through these lower levels here and uh, hit the sweet spot. So, any other questions or comments about the overall market, Bitcoin and Ethereum? All right, um, then let's go over to Altcoin Alert. See if we can find any trades. Okay, I think we have a couple new people. So um, the altcoin alert reading I like is the the radar, which is the second option, and then turning easy mode off. I want to see all the information, all the columns. Um, I frequently start with the AA score. I like to see about 85 or higher, very bullish. We don't have any of those today. I'm gonna refresh real quick, make sure we're current. All right, so we've got Wax, Luna, um, bullish, but not above 85. It's the best we can do for AA scores at the moment. So um, let's go ahead and check it out. Um, I'm already in a Luna trade from this morning from a different source. Uh, but um, let's give it a look. Uh, Luna should be on my list. All right, we'll go to the day chart first to get the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see this pattern on a lot of the coins. We had a big pump at the end of December. 
big drop in January, over 50%. And it's been coming back. Uh, the one hour. <coughs> it's had a nice move up the last couple days. Up 12%, dipped a little bit, back up to right around 10%. So on the one hour chart, our trading range is this group of candles down here around $44. And then you can see we have multiple resistance here, right around 53. So we'll mark that as well. So this is our one hour chart trading range. Go to the five minute chart, see if we can find an entry. We're already coming up against, against the one hour, which is looking pretty similar to the short term uh, trading range top ceiling as well. We do have some Short-term support down here around 49, 49.50, 49.60. So that might, I think that's a desirable area to get in. I, I, I don't like getting in in this situation. So there's a few things we can do to. Um, I'm just going to put on my uh, divergence as well. A few things we can do to get optimum or at least better entry points, and for the for those. On the day trading side, I like to go to my 15 minute chart and put alerts on some of my my indicators. Um, the MFI is pretty high, as is the RSI. I want to catch these down here. I mean, you can see when the MFI gets down to the 20 to 30 level and comes back, it does usually often make a, a nice move back up. You know, had you done that, that would have been a nice 2% move. We like those as day traders. Um, so you can you can also use divergence, uh, quick review divergences. Uh, we had a disagreement between between the indicators and the and the price action. Let's see if I can find an example real quick. Back D. Well, just take my word for it. I don't want to go into a a long training on divergence, but but what I like about divergence is it has some predictive value. Um, so here's an example here where a bunch of divergences fired off, five of them, five different oscillators right here. So that you've gotten in on this on a short, you know, goes all the way down, you know, 4% on the 15 minute chart. That'd be a good, really good day trade. Of course, if you're shorting, that means you're using leverage. Uh, I recommend that everybody get good at spot trading first, get comfortable with the exchanges. And then uh, when you have some sustained success doing that, then, then it's okay to start learning how to do leverage because leverage is uh, scary and can be expensive and you can lose your butt. So we don't want that. I know my, uh, my leverage training was very expensive. All right, so where do we get in on this? Um, we can set an alert on Luna on the, uh, on the divergence. We're gonna click on the positive divergence. I like to put on once per bar close to make sure that the the, uh, uh, the position actually the 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 time actually closes, and then you know you call it whatever you want and click create, then you're good to go for your for your divergence alert. If you're not comfortable with that kind of thing yet, and you just want to set, you know, you see a see the support here, you just set an alert down here on the price. You know, add an alert at 49.48. And um, whenever that uh, that alert goes off, you reevaluate, look at the candle action at that time, and see if you want to get in. You can also set alerts down here on the MFI. You know, I usually like a 20 crossing up. So that's a good alert to set. You know, when it dips below 20 and starts to come back up. And the same thing for the RSI on 30. So. Those are the uh, four t types of alerts that I use to define good entry points when I don't see one at the time I'm looking at the coin, which is most of the time. It's pretty rare for me to look at, you know, look at something uh, in the morning and jump on it right away. Usually I, I want to wait for one of these um, entry opportunities. All right. Any questions on Luna? Okay. Um, let's look at 
had another one open. Are we? That's dropped since I've looked at it. Let's look at Ample Fourth. I think that's on um, Coinbase Pro. No, KuCoin. Close enough. All right. Uh, get the big picture on the day. It's had a nice move today. It had been up to dollar twenty nine. Drop that, and then shot back up and got most of it back. It's been high as high as uh, two dollars in late October, so it's got potential to go to go back there. Could take a while to get back to two dollars. Big pump on the hour chart. This has had nearly all green candles since yesterday. So a big move up over 20%, close to 30. So this one concerns me that might be played out. There's only on the five minute chart, there's only one positive diverge, uh, bu bullish divergence. All the rest are bearish and they're almost all wrong. They, they have gone down a little bit on a few of them, but. And then on the five minute, we're already below the MFI. So that's that could be a good entry point. We are at the bottom of the Bollinger Band. That's really squeezy. There's no bubble at all. Yeah, only 2.3% between the uh, the top and the bottom. So that's not really a good entry. As far as our one, two, three dip strategy goes. Yeah, I'm not seeing any examples in the recent past either. So. I think this is going to be another example if you want to trade this of um, maybe setting an alert. Quite a bit of su support here around dollar nine. I think that would be a good price support level to try to get in. And then if you want to use the, um, the indicator alerts, to go to the 15 minute chart. It's already kind of low on the MFI, RSI not so much. Um, and uh, again, we can do a divergence alert, MFI alert, crossing 20, or an RSI alert, crossing 30. Um, all right, any questions on Ampleforth? Okay, see, most people go for the altcoin alert AA score, but that's not the one I use the most. I like this long-term sentiment. This was emphasized back in November, and I've been trading it ever since. Uh, quick recap, the sentiment you know, describes it here, but it's essentially the word on the street, the Twitter information, and this frequently precedes big moves and big dumps. So I like to trade, I like to look at this and then um, try to match it up with its elder impulse, which is a, a technical indicator, uh, trend-based, momentum-based. Uh, you can read the, uh, uh, the description here. It essentially, essentially combines exponential moving averages and the MACD. Mm -hmm. So if I see a very bullish on the long-term sentiment and bullish on the elder impulse, that's definitely worth looking at. But uh, we've had some contradictory information here. We get very bullish on the sentiment and then bearish on the uh, um, on the technicals, that's that's not what I want to see. So on the bullish side, let's see if we can see a bullish long term and a bullish um, elder, elder impulse. And we've got that here on Leo, whatever that is. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, I am not seeing any that really match up. There are some that have bullish on the sentiment and on the one hour, the hourly impulse, but I'd rather see it on the daily. But since we don't have any of those, let's look at something that's on the hourly. Um, you can look at uh, you know, Quantum, Digibuy, Teller. These are all ones I've traded before. Uh, let's check out Quantum. That might be on my list. Okay, day chart, big drop. Okay, 
last time we had a good high was late November. All uh, the coins have dumped hard since then. It's lost 70%. Got a little bit of it back recently on the hour. Pretty good movement um, since yesterday. We're starting to see this pattern. It's up 15%. Not bad. The five minute chart. It's top of the Bollinger Band. Don't like that. Seeing a good dip sequence to talk about either. Um, yeah, on on short term support, we've got some of that here. Say right about six sixty five, and then here at about six fifty five, more here. You know, 659. I tend to go in the middle <laughs> when I see uh, three things like this. And, um, and use that as my entry. Okay. I was hearing some background noise. I was going to mute it, but it went away. So if you want to set an alert, you know, in this area, you can put it on the line, leave the line if you want. Just add the alert at 660. I like round numbers. So that, that would be a good good place to uh, put that alert in and then reevaluate. Uh, if you want to use an indicator alert, go to the 15 minute chart. If you want to be more conservative, you know, you can use the 30 minute or the one hour as well. So, um, but I like the 15 minute chart for my day trading. Uh, got your uh, divergence alert and your MFI and your RSI alerts as well. Any questions on quantum? Okay, so another way you can use altcoin alert if you're, uh, if you're an experienced, um, Leverage trader, I like to short, use this to find shorts. So we've got one here on, I'm looking for bearish here and bearish on the elder impulse. I've got a couple of those. Man, I've traded many times. A bit of a contradiction here with bullish on the hourly, but I'm willing to stay in all day on a trade to get, you know, a couple percent. So let's look at mana and see if we can short it. I think I already have an alert set for mana. Yeah, I've already got that here. I went to the 30 minute though. All right, let's look at uh, big picture on mana. I'm on Bybit now and um, yeah, it was listed there in November, a big run up. Drop down 70, about 70%. Got about 20 of it back. In the hour. You can look at a trading range. I didn't mark this on the last couple of ones, but right about here on the low, 240. The high. It's right around here, 282. On the five minute, we're pretty close to that 282. Um, so I'd be more interested in trying to catch this at support here on the five minute chart. So recent support right around 259, 260. So I could set an alert around in this vicinity. I'd probably use 260. Yeah. Set your alert there, good to go. Or is, actually, uh, I'm trying to short this. So I um, <laughs> lost my mind for a minute. So that this action actually looks pretty good to me. Um, I've got bearish divergence forming on the five minute chart. That's not um, always real persuasive to me. I'd rather see the divergences on, on 15 minutes or longer. 
but we're pretty close to the to the range where it's been bouncing off lately. So instead of setting this alert, you'd set it if you want to short. I want to set it here around 280 or so, and uh, reevaluate when that um, when it hits that range if it goes up. Uh, or you can do the divergence. Let's go to the 15 minute chart. We actually have divergence forming now. Actually, it just formed. So if you want to short this based on this, on the MACD and the volume weighted MACD di divergence, that's something to consider. You've got um, you've got the MFI pointing down, the RSI pointing down, and I always look at the MACD. Well, it's not since it lags. It looks like the the red's going to cross the blue. So this might be a good time to get in on a short, not financial advice on MANA. All right, let's check the chat. Jocelyn, okay, is asking about the, what does the MFI stand for? Cheryl says money factor index. That's, that's, that's correct. So this is a flow of money in and out of the, the coin on this particular time frame. So it follows, it's sort of like the RSI, but not exactly. They, they kind of look alike, but I like to match both of these up um, to uh, help confirm my decision. So it's good to have multiple indicators uh, helping you out to determine your entry points. All right, so on a short, I kind of like that I have divergence. If you're not quite swayed by that and you want to you see um, you know, it confirmed by an indicator by like the MFI or the RSI, you set your alert here. Instead of crossing up, you're going to go crossing down on usually the 80 value. It's considered overbought for the MFI. And you can do the same thing on the RSI at 70. Crossing down, oops, crossing down 70. Call it whatever you want, and you're good to go. You can even set all of them if you're, if you want lots of uh, confirmation, set your uh, divergence, MFI, RSI, and even add some of your own indicators if you want. Okay. All right, Jocelyn's asking, when do you feel the MFI gives an interesting signal? Um, most of the time, the MFI is gonna be trading between the 20 and the 80 range. So the 20 is up here, the dotted, or 80 is up here, the dotted line, 20 down here. So if it drops below 20 and comes back, here's an example on the 15 minute chart. If you look at the corresponding candle action, you know, when it, when it, when it went that low and came back, we got a move on the 15 minute chart, a really good one. You know, we're up you know, about 7% on this move. That's an outstanding day trade. So that's what we're looking for with um, you know, with the MFI and then the RSI is similar. It's just 70 and 30 is usually the range people use on that. Okay. Okay, I think Karen wants to look at the Gala coin. We'll, we'll Bring that up a little bit later after I'm done going through uh, all coin alert and we'll look at specific coins. <clears throat> okay, any questions on, on MANA? Okay, I talked earlier before about some of my trend base indicators that what you're seeing here and what I usually talk about, are we're looking for dips and then retraces or, or, um, or pull, you know, pullbacks and then recoveries. I think that's, you know, that's my favorite way to trade, but I've also been tinkering with some, some trend-based strategies where a trend starts to establish and you jump on. You know, the trend is your friend. So I'm going to show you a different layout than you've seen before. Uh, this one here. All right. Are you guys seeing my Ethereum 15 minute chart. All right, uh, George gives me the thumbs up. 
I have the MFI on here, which you've seen before, and the RSI we just talked about on the other charts. There are a few different ones here. This one that just gives buy and sell signals is called the chandelier exit. And there are lots of trend-based indicators on, um, on uh, trading. If you just type in trend, I've got a few of them marked, super trend, half trend, whole trend, ADX trend, here a trend, there a trend, everywhere a trend, trend. So, and there's hundreds more in here. So um, my goal with this was to try to catch trends and then use higher, higher dollar values and higher leverages to, um, you know, to, uh, on scalping, but it hasn't worked very well. It's just, I, I just seem to hit 40 to 50%. But if I bump it out to the 15 minute, excuse me, in the 30 minute charts, I've had more success. So right now I'm on the 15 minute chart on Ethereum. Um, this is a chandelier exit. It's easy to set alerts on, you know, you just right click on it, add alert on CE. And you can put, you can emphasize buys, sells, or just a direction change. Um, but you don't rely on this in and of itself. Um, I also like this one, the choppiness index. Um, when it has a high value, it's just chopping in between. It's not, you know, it's either going side, it's going sideways, essentially. We don't, we don't like sideways as day traders. We want a, a, a progress movement. So when you see this candle action moving up here, the choppiness drops. We want low choppiness. So this is a, an indicator I often use with my trend-based trading. So like, like this here, okay, we get a buy signal um, on the chandelier here. The choppiness is trending down. The MFI and the RSI are trending up. And I've got these other trend-based ones I just kind of tossed on, trend strength and squeeze momentum. These at the time, uh, the squeeze momentum is really slow. I may get rid of this, but trend strength is ADX is pretty good. So it's it's got green going. And even the squeeze momentum, even though it's showing red, it's it's coming up back up. So I've got multiple indicators that are telling me that this this trend, you know, should have some staying power. So you know, had I gotten in here, you know, this would have gone up you know, 7%. I'm usually only looking for two or 3% when I'm trading leverage. So I, I would have gotten out probably with 2% right around here. Um, you know, that's two hours, 2% 2 times 10 X leverage is 20%. Love that as a day trader, do that all day. And you can do pretty well for yourself. So that's one of the trend-based strategies I'm, I'm doing. This is a and then the other, I have some other deviations I'm using, but they're mostly based on the chandelier exit and the choppiness. Like these four, or these three actually, um, chandelier, chop, and MFI are the trend-based ones I'm using the most. Um, and then these I use on this particular layout. And I've got another layout too that's got some others, but um, this one, this one's pretty easy to follow, I think. So hopefully, um, you know, you guys can use something like this to get better entry points. What I don't want you to do on altcoin alert is open it up at, I don't know, after work or before work or during your lunch hour and just jump on when you see, you know, an AA score or a long-term sentiment sort that you like. We want to get those good entry points so we can better maximize our results with altcoin alert. So, all right, I've got a, any questions that you may have quite a few on this, uh, you know, this trend-based strategy. I've only been doing this for about two months, so I'm not an expert at it, but um, I like what I see so far. So any questions on this? All right, let's check the chat. Okay, um, Jocelyn asking for about volume, and she's asking about the parabolic SAR. It sounds familiar, but I haven't used that one. Um, volume is down here. Uh, I don't emphasize volume maybe as much as I should because I think it's reflected in, in the, the candle action and in some of these um, you know, indicators. So, uh, but yeah, um, you could put alerts on, on volume as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't done it before. 
before, not not recently anyway. It's not something I usually do, but uh, you know, volume is important. But I do think it's incorporated in some of these other things that I've shown you. All right. Any uh, any questions on uh, the trend based approach or the other things we looked at? So, okay. That's um. Uh -huh. CJ, this one, the chandelier exit is new to me. And okay. I'm reading the definition of volatility based indicator that identifies stop loss exit points for long and short trading positions. Yeah, is it's pri it's primarily to help you get in and out of trades at the right time. I find that the exit doesn't work very well, um, but I do like the entries. Sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, well, I'm just trying to understand it because it's a new one for me. Yeah, um, I found this just looking for trend-based strategies in, in trading video, like I showed you earlier. I don't even think I've seen a video on it on YouTube. But, you know, the sell buy really jumped out at me and, and how easy it is to put alerts on it. And, you know, I read a little blurb on, on trading view about it and it said just what you just read. And, and so I was really looking for it to, to give me some guidance on how to get in and out. But like, let's say you got in here you know, and you're relying on it to get you out. Well, at this point, you know, you're up 8.2%, but by the time this triggers, you know, you're down here at 4.8. So you've given up almost half of your profits, um, you know, to wait for that sell signal, which this is still a really good day trade, you know, it's less than a day at almost 5%. But, you know, I, and, and most of the time it doesn't work out this well. It, it gets choppy, like, you know, like this cell here doesn't do that well. You know, had you stayed in on this, you'd have had a loss of, you know, like almost two, like a one and a half percent. So, you know, like most indicators that it, it works about, you know, 40 to 60% of the time. That's why I got to match it up with some of these other indicators to have better results. So, but um, yeah, I don't know if it's any better or worse than, I mean, I've looked at, the, you know, the half trend, the super trend, some of those. Uh, but it seems to work a little better than those, in my opinion. And uh, again, I like how easy it is to use, how visual it is, and uh, how it's, it's easy to set alerts. You know, the trend direction is, is nice to, to use as well. So it's been in my trend-based uh, arsenal for about two months. All right. Um, Somebody mentioned the Gala token earlier. Let's uh, let's go ahead and throw it open to you know whatever you guys want to talk about crypto wise, um, you know day trading particular projects. We'll go ahead and look at Gala on this uh, on this chart here. And now if I were looking for a long position on Gala, you know it's it's I'm too late, so I would set my alert. Um, that's not right. CE, got to make, make sure the CE thing comes up if you're doing your right click. So CE buy, I usually put once per bar close and, you know, maybe call it trend-based, trend trade, and click create and wait for that to, you know, wait for it to go through a sell cycle and then come back up into the buy and then get in there and catch that, catch the next trend. Um, but again, when the alert goes off, I'm going to check it. So, you know, this one went off at eight o'clock this morning. A um, little concern. I, I, I drew this this 50. I actually made some adjustments on the choppiness to make it. Um, yeah, I, these are usually like 80 or 20 or something like that. I made them both 50 and made the lines fatter. So I like this middle value if it's below or trending down hard, then that's a positive sign for me. It's sort of in nowhere, no man's land right now. It's trending up a little bit, but still below 50. Um, I'd rather see this go down like this. And choppiness goes down if the trend goes up or the trend goes down. So that, that's a little counterintuitive, but, um, but anyway, on the, I got the MFI going up, the RSI going up. Um, you know, the, the trend strength just printed green. 
uh, squeeze momentum's coming out of a, a a bearish cycle. So there's probably enough good information here that I would go forward with this. So had I done that, you know, I would have gotten my two to three percent right about here, a little over an hour. Love that as a day trader. So that's how I would use it for Gala um, on the 15 minute chart. Now, if we're looking at a, you know, an overall situation with Gala, you know, the big picture had a big drop from uh, from November. Hasn't done much today. Um, our trading range is on the hour chart, you know, 18 cents on the low side, you know, about 20, 20.8 20 cents on the high side. Probably would just wait for another buy signal, but like this sell signal didn't do much. You know, drifted down a little bit, and then we'll run the five minute chart, but still, I would I'd bounce over to the 15 minute chart and then try to get a, a buy signal there. So, in, in that scenario, it's going to go through a, a little dip and then, then the buy will kick in, and you can trade that trend. All right, any questions on Gala? Well, I know I dumped a lot of stuff on you guys today. Uh, you know, the, the divergence and some of the other, those other indicators are, are still pretty new. I've been talking about them since like December or January. Obviously this trend-based um, approach is, is new as well. I think I talked about it last week for the first time. So um, I'll check the chat real quick. Okay, Jocelyn's asking, lagging indicators versus leading indicators. All, all indicators are lagging. No such thing as a leading indicator that I know of. Um, but that's why I talk about divergence because divergence has some predictive abil ability. So um, that's why I've been emphasizing it lately. And you know, we talked about it in MANA and that we just got, you know, this just printed on, um, on bearish divergence. So, you know, this could be a potential shorting candidate if you if you're trading like that if you're still if you're spot trading then you know set your alert here on the uh on the on the bullish divergence um see jocelyn i think you're fairly new to this so here's how we find divergence indicators this is divergence from many indicators volume four uh, this is the one i like for two reasons, um, it it will it doesn't go off it doesn't print until the the divergence is is um, confirmed. So this is so that for example this is bearish divergence and and the 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 red line goes to the green candle and then when the red candle prints after that that's when you get the alert. That's what I like about it. And then I also took a few. On the settings here on this particular one, I, I took a few of them out. You know, CCI took out OBV, you know, Shike and Money Flow, which I thought was similar to the um, the Money Flow Index. So now I just leave these in here that I'm familiar with: MACD, Histogram, RSI, Stochastic, Momentum, um, Volume Weighted MACD, and Money Flow. So. Uh, but you can leave these in if you want and, and use them. They're they're valid as well. I just wasn't that familiar with them and my chart was getting kind of cluttered. So okay. Well, if there are no other questions on altcoin alert or um, you know, spot trading, day trading, I'll go ahead and stop the recording here. Uh, we will um I'll uh, take a short break and then we'll begin the carbon portion. So those of you who attended live, I appreciate it. Uh, watching at home on, uh, on the video recording, I appreciate that as well. Hopefully we'll see most of you Monday.